Hello, everybody. Hey, I'm Matt. I'm Zach. And this is MZ Car Guys. Not a podcast. Not a podcast, but an actual video and a video review, a uh, video video review of Ford versus Ferrari. Yep. Today we're going to talk about five things we like and five things we didn't like. Yep. And uh, as a couple of car nerds, bear with us. Yeah. So what this isn't going to be is we're not going to comment on. Um, the videography, the color balancing, or anything like that, because we know nothing about video, nope. as you're she seeing right now. So, um, let's get right into it. We're going to do it as uh, from a car guy's perspective. Um, so, let's start with the things we didn't like. All now, right. Number one, not enough Ferrari. In Ford versus Ferrari, yeah. there's not a whole lot of Ferrari. Uh, we, we, you don't really get the, the, the aspect of how great of a company they were. There's the Lee Iacocca speech where he talks about how Ferrari's built the perfect car, but we don't see it. We don't see the development of the 330 P3 and P4. Right. And, you know, this is, this is, an, this is arguably the most beautiful race car ever built. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. In car history. And it's on screen for 10 seconds. Total in a two and a half hour film, I think there's a couple of pan shots of the car. Otherwise, there's some shots of interior of the car. That's it. There's no talk about you know the engine and what the uh, up in the displacement of the V12 or the fact that it's a five speed on the V12 versus a four speed on the V8. None of that. It's just glossed over. It's just oh that's Ferrari over there and we're doing our thing over here and trying yeah. to build the best car we can. And 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 we'll talk about this a little bit later. I mean they 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 show you the car. And, and, and you got you get to hear the sound of it and stuff. Um, and for a brief second, you see the, you know, the red line of the V12 of the Ferrari as being 9,000 RPMs. Which is staggering today. I mean, yeah. I mean, 9,000 RPMs for a V12 is amazing today. And this is mid-60s. So, you know, also you don't get anything about, um, about Enzo Ferrari realistically. Um, you don't really get an essence of the man. I'm sure the actor who portrayed him, uh, whose name eludes me right now. Yeah, me too. But, but he he did a good job. He really looks, good job. He looks just like him. Yeah, yeah. He 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 looks a lot like himself. And they and they did reference the fact Ilk Mandatore. So at least they got you know like his well known yeah. the name he went by as a for, as the owner of the Ferrari. You know, yeah. Scuderia Ferrari. Yeah. Um, they, Exactly. So, but it, but so yeah. So for you know a movie called Ford versus Ferrari, not enough Ferrari. Yeah, it was it was really so, a whole lot of you know the the Miles and Shelby show. Yeah. So which is it's good, but yeah, it's not what the movie's called. Probably so. mistitled. Number two. Number two. Uh, unrealistic moments for dramatic effect. I know this is kind of a no duh, because <sighs> um, it is it is a movie and it's based on a historical event. It's not a documentary. It's not a documentary, but. You know, I mean, like, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about my big one, you know, and, and and I know Zach argues with me about this, but you're doing 200 plus miles an hour in the mid 60s when your typical road car max out at 100, 110 miles an hour. And you're looking over at the guy next to you as you're going down a two lane road to, yeah. to glare at him. Yeah, there's in racing, you do kind of maybe sometimes glance over at the guy next to you. This was a but long you don't sit out. there and stare at a guy when you're doing 210 plus miles an hour down the Molson Strait when you have to focus on your braking and taking that that more than 90 degree corner and and hoping your brakes don't fail when when you're doing this. Um, so yeah, I understand dramatic effect, but that was a bit much. Number yeah. three. Number three. <laughs> I know, look, and we'll talk about this more in a minute, but they did a good job of not making Enzo Ferrari, or Ferrari in general, out to be the bad guy. Yeah. But the Ford executive, Leo Beebe, did not have to be that douchey to get the point across. Uh, yes. I mean, it's, I, I, I think, I think this movie of, of, of everything um, could have really benefited from not really having a protagonist. I'm antagonist. sorry, antagonist. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I definitely I, had a protagonist. Yeah, I, <laughs> but I, I think they could have done perfectly fine without having a real antagonist in the movie. 
I mean, yeah, and we're going to have some spoilers in here, but just just as, as a quick moment, like the fact that Hank that Hen, Hank the Deuce, Henry Ford II makes Leo Beebe the head of the race production just to emphasize the fact that he's going to take over and, and basically the biggest dick in the entire production is going to be the guy who's going to screw over Sh Carol Shelby. Yeah, I mean, especially <sighs> since there's no real historical, it, 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 there's no hi historical Re record. record to back yeah. that up. Right. If there is, please leave a comment down below. Um, so, you know, yeah, like, we, like we get it, we get it. Yeah. He, he, does, he doesn't like Miles. He doesn't think Miles is the best guy for the job. He wants more of a corporate man. He's a corporate man himself. We get it. You don't yeah. need to hammer us over the head with it. Exactly. Right? Number um, four? Number four. Um, there's no background on Henry the Ford second's dad, Edsel Ford. Oh my gosh, this is... So, big spoiler ahead. Uh, yeah, so, and, and as, as you can see in the title, it's spoiler reviews. Um, so, it showed it in the, um... In the trailer, where Carol Shelby gets into a GT40 with Henry Ford II, and he takes him out and he races him around and stuff like that, and the guy starts crying, and, and I was really afraid that they were just kind of show, you know, as you know, it's kind of like a bumbling, you know, crying fool and that type of thing. But there's a really sweet part of it where he's crying not because he's scared of of you know the drive. He's scared. He he's crying because he wishes that his dad could be here to see this, yeah, and really we get no information on Edsel Ford and how important Edsel Ford was to Ford, um, how important he was to Henry Ford II, and, and so, so and how important he was to the American war effort at the time. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, you know, he's the one who got you know all of the. Uh, all the contracts and everything like that set up yeah, to build, I mean, build I mean, planes mostly. Yeah. To build planes mostly. But I mean, you know, it, it's unfortunate that he passed away early on in the war and stuff, um, you know, from cancer. But, but it, that moment I feel could have been, a, 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 there, there could have been more of an essence to it. You, it really could have been a heavier moment to really emphasize and kind of put Henry Ford the second in a better light than what the movie actually portrays him. You almost wonder if there, if it would have been better with like a five second flashback, almost to like something that Hedsel Ford had said in some meeting or in some big conference or something, something that really like was appropriate for the moment. Yeah, a couple so, of flashback you know, moments with with, you know, with dad like, and son. Something, yeah, something like with um, when when Ford goes racing, we go out there to be the best or so, something like that. You know, that Edsel may have said back in the day. That, yeah, absolutely. You know, and then it just you know just a quick flash or something, and then you're, and then you're back to reality. You know, and, and Henry Ford the second. I mean, the the moment itself is. I like the fact that they took time with the moment. They they let him cry. They didn't make it one of these five second deals. One of these, <laughs> they really let him have the moment. There was some silence in the theater going on, and then he explains why he's crying. But without the background, I think it gets neutered. Oh yeah, absolutely. quite quite a bit. So. Yeah, it really is. It's just sort of like who's his dad and yeah. why you know is was he close to his dad? What was what is what his dad was to him? Yeah, yeah. exactly. None so, of that. So um, number five. Number five. Um, there are no discussions of the important people involved, um, and by important people we mean anything who anyone who's not. And this sort of ties into our number one dislike, because um, a lot of these people are in that. Um, right. But, so, but outside of Ken Miles, Carol Shelby, Henry Ford II, and Enzo Ferrari, there's nobody and not even, even really Enzo Ferrari. Right. And yeah, yeah he, you don't him, get much background with that. You get the one negotiation at the table right where things don't go well yeah and the one moment where he's in the um sitting down having coffee by himself you know a little cappuccino yeah know, a little espresso um, but i i do though i, I gotta quickly point this out yeah. i do like the 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 uh, the enzo ferrari just really bring out the character of him giving all of those insults directly to lee iacocca and then the, then the meeting that Lee Iacocca has with Henry Ford II, where he's like, "What did he say about me?" <laughs> and then that they, was awesome. And then they, yeah, and then and then they have to eventually have to lay it out like word for word. Yeah. Um, no, it's 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 very. And then Henry Ford II's vitriolic is not too strong a word. Yes. Re re response to how things are going to go from now yeah. on. Let's um, go to war. I, I <laughs> love that. that that's, that's, that's a good summary. That, yeah, that, that's, that's one of the best lines. So we'll leave it at that. About but how we'll bury there him. were other people 
who yeah. really made an impact on yeah. this entire thing. Who were who? I mean, Ken, Ken Miles' family. They did a really good job portraying those people, Molly and, oh, and yeah. Molly and Peter. Yeah, yeah. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah. In the in the likes. But outside, but in terms of like the actual Ford versus Ferrari teams, there's no mention of Mato Fotigietti, who, as you listen to the podcast, oh is, my gosh. is a direct foil to Carroll Shelby in terms of development of the cars. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he's probably much better qualified than Carroll Shelby is. Well, right. And that's a whole other weird thing because he was yeah. promoted at 25 for a job he had no experience in. <laughs> yeah. That's Enzo for you. Good um, luck to you. But. <laughs> At least Enzo said, "I'm going yeah. to help you along the way." Yeah, but but, Mauro, uh, but yeah, you know, there's 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 almost there's no mention of the the character, the race car driver Bandini, who is the Miles foil. Oh my gosh! Has, they mention his name, you know what his face looks like, and that's it. He never speaks that you're aware of. Yeah. There's no, you know, there's a little bit of chatter with whoever. Um, it might have been Forgetti, the guy who was freaking out when um, the scene when the when the nut the bolt the nut for the bolt got dropped on the. I don't know area. because right. I mean we don't know he wasn't be, mentioned because that I mean if, but he was young enough to if, do that if if it is him then he he was relegated to a comical character right a one I note. mean you know right. oh the life. Italians they're mad uh, yeah, you know they're, it's, they're confused and upset yeah how, they, how they were for us. they were so much better put together than that they were so I mean the the portrayal of that was yeah. They were almost Teutonic in how well the system yeah. was run. Very un, un- Italian. In and respect. then there's the the complete lack of background information at all whatsoever of Bruce McLaren, who won the race. Who won one. the freaking yeah. race by a weird <laughs> circumstance? Yeah. But he won the race. It's Bruce McLaren. His namesake is with the McLaren Automotive today. Yeah. And, who makes some of the best cars in the world. You know, and, and it's just, hey, Bruce, won the race. Hey, good job. You know, and then the audience is going, hey, who's Bruce? <laughs> you know, I it's mean, very weird. And, <sighs> and I was, the other thing, speaking of, of, of the people, is Miles only drove half of the 24 hours. Who that, was his co-driver? That, that, oh. I have no idea. He, his name is mentioned yeah. two or three times in the race. And all you get out yeah. of it is like, uh, is the co-driver says things like, she's running a little hot, or and the, the brakes are no good. That's all you get out of his co-driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, I mean, he oh, man, half... I, I totally forgot the guy's name, yeah. because they didn't even mention it. He um, raced and the other and, half and I'd, have to, hours. I'd have to go back either into our podcast, huh? podcast, MZ Car Guys. Um, and all the, all the platforms you could yeah. desire. Yep. And, um, um, yeah, but I, I have but no yeah. idea. So, you know, I, I think there were some key people that, you know, that... It should have been included. In this so other guy. That, that's a good list. That's a yeah. l- now, longer word than we want to. So what we like, oh, right. what we like, Matt. Oh, number oh one. Oh boy, attention to detail in the sights and sounds of oh. this world, especially the racing itself. Holy crap! Okay, so when they are blasting down the Molson Strait, you know that moment where they're staring at each other lovingly in the eyes. Um, right, which is. But the sound of that seven liter V8 at 7,000 RPMs and that V12 at 9,000 RPMs. And if you see this movie, go see it in Dolby surround sound. Don't just watch it on your phone on some, you know, you know, pirated site or whatever. You're not going to get, cause we're sitting there at, uh, in the, in the Alameda historic theater. Yeah. And they've got you've got the Ferrari V12 over here, and you've got the rumbling of the V8 over here, and it's just so <laughs> it's harmonic. beautiful. I got chills now, oh, right now, thinking plus, about it. Plus the looks of the cars. Oh my gosh! When, when they when they walk into the Ferrari factory, and they show all of the P3s, Matt gasped. Yeah. He was it like, was, "It's gorgeous." We 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 just we 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 looked at each other like, is, "Is is this legal? Are we allowed to be watching this? Are we in the wrong movie?" Um, <laughs> it was just <laughs> so gorgeous. Um, Ar- arguably, to this day, the P three P there are no P threes left. Every P three was turned into a P four. So yeah, but 
or, or turned Sentai. into some kind of like uh, uh, there, there was there was a couple that were turned into uh, road cars. Okay. For for specialty customers. Okay. Okay. Like okay. Yeah. But but arguably the greatest race car in history, even to this day. But best. Best, race, looking. Sorry, best looking. Best looking. Oh best my looking gosh, race yeah, car in history. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's right up there with it with the two hundred and fifty GT of the same time period. Which which hold which they also the showed they showed two GTs oh, God. Uh, California's right out front. Mm. Oh dude dude dude. Anyways, so yeah, the sights and sounds, but they also they got the sound of the two eighty nine correct. They got the sound of uh, oh yeah the, the the Mustang Cobras. The which, yeah yeah which, so, which so, had so, both, so they got both so, engines. yeah the AC Cobras they got those correct yeah. Um, and, and the looks of them and stuff like that. And, and I love how they, Matt Damon portrayed Carol Shelby because to him it was just a car. I mean, it was a, it was a passion of his and stuff like that, but he's sitting on the hood. He's sitting on the fender. Right. It's, it, it's, right. it's, it's a car. And it's that's truly how it's car not, guys look at cars. Right. It's not, it's not sacred. Yeah. It's nothing sacred. It's a car. It's a machine. Um, they even so, got the sound of the country square, correct? <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure they did. I'm not familiar with the Country Square myself. So, anyways, I'm not admitting to anything. Yes, but anyways, but yeah, sights, sounds, <laughs> um, the uh, everything happening uh, in the pits of what's kind of going on and stuff like that, yeah. um, and and you know, except for the bumbling, the almost Three Stooges like you know portrayal of the Ferrari racing thing, which is just stupid. Yeah. Anyway, good luck with that. So number two, yeah, honest and accurate portrayal of the main characters. Now this is not entirely true, but for the most part, overall, minor minus some details, minus some things that history may want to forget about Carol Shelby, particularly, <laughs> and his personal behavior, his yeah. womanizing, and some of the other yeah. things he did. Right. Accurate overall portrayal. Yeah. They did a really what what they showed of Enzo Ferrari is very accurate to the way he's known, and he's known to dozens of people who can corroborate. Yes. You know, yeah, with him, respect was everything. Being on the factory floor, drinking espresso, yeah. watching everything closely. Yeah, because he, right. he was an engineer. Um, the the portrayal of Carol Shelby's uh, upset, you know, just kind of upsetness with um, the fact that he couldn't race anymore. Um, oh, yeah. and, and also I really loved, and, and I'm not sure... I haven't read anything um, as far as how accurate this is or whatever, but I really enjoyed the the relationship um, of Ken Miles, his wife, uh, and and I, I think we're getting into number three. That's okay. My we'll, bad. We'll blend them together. But yeah, so so two not kind of blends into three, and the relationship of Ken Miles and his wife and his son. Yeah. Um, uh, Molly and Peter. Yeah, Molly and Peter, and 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 for those of you who who have married and have been married for more than yeah, say call, call four five. or five years, yeah, yeah, which is both of us. Y- you understand that, you know, precious moments between a married couple don't always end up in a porno. I mean, the 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 the, the one the one scene that I love the most was. He can't go to the 65 Le Mans. Um, he's listening to it on the radio as he's working on the cars and so forth. Molly shows up, brings him a couple of beers, changes the sound, you know, changes the radio to music, and they dance. That's real marriage. Right, and the scene ends. And, and, and in most other movies, it would have ended up something hot and heavy on the hood of a GT40. Right. You know, which... Let's be honest, doesn't always happen. They love it to, but doesn't. Right. And that's, so. that's a really angled hood, too. That's going to have a tough time up there. You're better off on an oily, greasy floor than you are on the hood of a GT40. That coefficient of drag is yeah, really thanks. low. Thank, thanks, Matt. Sure, no problem. Here's Anyways, home. moving on to number four. All right, number four. Um, so, Enzo isn't the bad guy. Thank goodness. Yes, it's Ford <sighs> versus Ferrari, but this is not one of those polarized... You know, Italian man shaking his fist, you know, and 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 shouting shouting things, you yeah. know, to try, you know, we'll get those damn Americans and all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, it, it was much more nuanced than that. Yeah, it was, even though, and and kind of like we we said before, the movie really didn't need an antagonist. 
and 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 I'm really glad that they, you know, we're not happy with who they chose as the antagonist, but we're really glad that it wasn't Enzo Ferrari because it very well could have easily have been that. Yeah, it would have been kind of trite. Yeah, it, it would have been. Even though, in essence, Enzo Ferrari is kind of a jerk. Right, but but he's a jerk because he's so passionate about racing that everything else falls by the wayside. Exactly, that's all he cares about. Yeah, his road cars so, function solely as a funding project to allow him to race. Yeah, right. And that's what they, they talk about that briefly. That's the other nice thing. They did talk about the fact that they come from two polar opposite uh, perspectives in terms of how the racing team got started. Right, because Ferrari has always been. A race driver. He raced for Alfa Romeo for many years yep. before he was he, crew chief for them. Also, right before he left Alfa in nineteen thirty eight to form his own company. Yeah, Ferrari, Scuderia Ferrari, which means Ferrari oh. Racing Team. Yeah, right. Versus Ford, which was a car for the people who decided to also build a racing team to allow them to do that. So opposite ways of looking at the same thing. Yeah. So Ferrari built the racing team as a passion, and Ford built it to be. Um, basically, Market, advertising, yeah. marketing, yeah. And, and 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 the and the movie accurately portrays that. Yeah. Well, they portray the Ford part of it once again. Ford versus Ferrari. I love Ferrari. Um, so um, another thing that I kind of want to kind of um, pop back to just a little bit um, back back to the relationship between um, Ken and his son is is the way that they're able to. Um, they're kind of able to explain the the actual race, Le Mans, and he does it by explaining it to his son. So he's able to they're they're able to use that as a vehicle to explain it to the audience because the vast majority of you guys, you know, may not really truly understand what it is, and and it's it's written well, it's portrayed excellently by Christian Bales. He did such a good job. And um, uh, the, 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 the kid who played Peter, can't remember his name off the top of my head, I do apologize, um, he was excellent in this. I think everybody really did just a top-notch job. I can't really think of anybody who... Oh, yeah, yeah. They, so, the, the, you've seen the, most of you have seen the trailers, I'm sure, but in, in one of the trailers, you see a, there's a scene where, where Ken Miles is sitting down with his, or talking with his son, and he looks out over the, this airfield, is actually what it is, it's yeah. an um, airport runway system. And he say sit down. They slowly sit down on the track, and he's explaining him, you know, how it's going to visually look, yeah. and how oh, it's all going to the perfect way. And and it's a great way to avoid exposition, right? It's not essentially one character talking to the screen. It's explaining to someone else. Yeah. This is how the whole thing. This is how you connect yeah. one corner to the next yeah. in a way. Yeah. Exposition right. is necessary, but it's how you portray that exposition that really, really, truly exactly. Helps. Exactly. So for a. Right. A minor, a minor point unrelated to anything else. It's it's a minor issue. We all really liked it though. Yeah. It's a, probably one of the best car guy, pure car guy moments. Yes. In in the film. Yes. Um, which makes it even better. Yeah. And it is Ken's rant about the Mustang at launch. Oh my gosh. So. And, and now, all of you Mustang guys out there, we understand. We hear you. We know what the Mustang is. Yes. It's a sporty but the car one the thing that's glossed over is 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 you know what it is now, and what it was two or three years after its launch. But one of the things that you're not willing to admit to yourself yes, is it what is. it was at launch, which was a heavily reworked Ford Falcon. Yes, it 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 was, it. and. It was mostly bought by women at the time. It was it was known as a mm -hmm. secretary's car. In fact, VIN number one was with its original owner. It was just found a few years ago, and that was bought by a woman. Yeah. VIN number one. Yeah. They, they tracked it down in, in 19, the 1964 and a half generation. But yeah, it was a 170 cubic inch 2.8 liter inline six. Yeah. Which made round about a hundred horsepower, if I had to guess. Probably around about, yeah. Yeah, a little more than that, maybe. And yeah. then you got your because because I think because I think the bigger uh, three point three liter, uh, which came which was available as kind of like an upgraded engine, um, I think that was around like uh, hundred and fifty ish horsepower, something yeah, yeah. like that. So, so probably one hundred ten, one hundred twenty. So, yeah. so um, you know, but and and then your choice of what a four speed manual, a three speed automatic, I think. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I so, think that I think that is correct. Which so, was par for the course of the time. It wasn't anything revolutionary. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? So but, you know, it was it was it was pretty. It was cheap. It was made by a well by a well respected company. Ford. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to tack on one thing. But that's Ford. not a disrespect of the Mustang itself. No, it's, it's because, just a statement of that's what it was, yeah, right? Because both of us being Americans, it's 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 almost required for citizenship, I believe, for us to appreciate the Mustang. Shut up, then. Okay, sorry. Um, in fairness, my, my grandmother had a 68 that she loved a lot. It was a um, 289 automatic, but it was it was a beautiful car. Yeah. But I just, I've never, you know. So what's your side note? I was, so, so 4B, which is also related to the Mustang launch, was the very accurate, without beating you over the head, almost documentary portrayal of the misogyny chauvinism at the time. Yeah, especially it, it, in the car business. Yeah, right? it's the complete lack of women's voice entirely, even among the women who were whoever the executives. Yeah, at Ford. Yeah, had nothing to say. And and we understand this is the mid '60s. This is just before the feminist revolution. Um, yeah, it's but just the way it was. but being you know especially you know I think I think we're coming out of the Me Too movement or whatever or we're in the middle of it or whatever it's. But it's it's very easy for people who are making films like these to be a little heavy-handed with what they term, uh, you know, uh, toxic masculinity. So right. you, no, there's a lot of it in this movie. You but... you you can sh oh yeah absolutely yeah 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 there's there's a lot of testosterone in this thing, but they they really. They, they toned it down so they're showing you what the accurate portrayal is without being too heavy handed with mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it was. And that's everything. I mean, I mean, there's no there's no beating of women in this or, you know, hey, why don't you just go sit down there, honey? You know, that kind of a thing. There was right. none of that. No verbal abuse. Yeah, there was no verbal abuse or anything like that, you know, or, you know, just guys acting, you know, just really, you know, just really nasty towards women or anything like that. But it just showed a, 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 an accurate portrayal of what it was like in 1960, you know, in the middle 60s. So. Yeah, yeah, so to give you, like a, like a, here's a good example. So in terms of what the women were doing is that outside of Molly, mm -hmm. outside of Molly's connection with, with Ken, almost every female conversation was the secretaries in the Ford executive offices. Yeah, yeah, which, 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 which realistically you shows you. And then, of course, at the Mustang launch, you have... All the women that are dressed up really nice and really that they're either right. serving stuff or they're wives. the really rich executives' wives, right, or and, significant others, whatever they, you want to say. And they just have nothing to say, and it's unfortunate, right? And yeah. I mean, the only the only woman actually in any position of any kind of power really is the Italian translator at the negotiation contract. Oh yeah, true, true, absolutely. That's really, and that's an Italian woman. Yeah, so you know, she's not even American. So, so thank you for not. Beating us over the head with that, but that but time. it was yeah, but it's accurate. So like, if you yeah. want to know what the sixties were like, especially in the American Midwest, there you go. Yeah, pretty close. It's right there. Okay, number now five. number five of things that we really liked. This is probably the big spoiler. If you're not a fan of history, how they portrayed the Ken Miles crash that killed him in 1960. It was it was late sixty it was late sixty six. Six okay. Yeah, it was late sixty six. He, he didn't make it to sixty seven. Um, it, it was it was nice how they were able to introduce the the aluminum composite honeycomb uh, that that was actually Ken Miles' idea. He really liked this, um, and how they were trying to use it to to try to lighten up the car. That was the biggest thing, is because the GT40 was heavy. Well, that super engine was heavy, massively heavy. Oh yeah, but it, they they were heavier than the Ferrari. You know, they, they didn't yeah. lose, you know, they, they only lost to the Ferraris because the Ferraris, you know, they, they, they blew up um, or crashed. Um, so trying to lighten the car up is, is was really, really, uh, they were looking for it and stuff. Um, and, and they did a little bit of foreshadowing of this in the crash and then the car caught on fire uh, during testing, you know, early on in the movie and stuff like that, and, and the son's like, "Oh, he got out," and and the guy's like, uh, "Yeah, well, you know, if you can get out, you're good." Well, you know, accurately portrayed, and in, in, in at the end of the movie when he crashes, um, the, uh, the 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 aluminum honeycomb um, collapses, 
and traps him in the car. And that's what killed him. Yeah, that was it. But they didn't do it... Once again, when they, when they did things in a subtle way, that was probably the, the most shining... The, the, the shiniest part of the movie. The, the best part of the movie. And they how they're doing it with the voiceover of Carol Shelby... And you're seeing, you know, the uh, the the lap, and it's way far off during testing of you know after the race has already been won and stuff, and then you see the crash, um, and they they really they really got the emotional part of that, um, yeah, and then you see there was one problem you only had with it though, what was that? Which was having Peter there. It seemed a bit heavy handed. Yeah, it, it was it was a little on the heavy handed side with that. Um having him witness his father's death essentially. I th- I think they wanted to add to the emotional part of it. Uh, I'm not sure if he was there or not. Right. If you wanted to jerk some tears, good job, you jerk some tears, that's for yeah. sure. But the you problem know? is is that they had Peter there and, and I guess this can be one of our dislikes was they, they did have Peter there. Um but you're really watching this, you know, you know, you know, through Carol's Shelby's eyes, um, you know, which is where you see most of this movie. Yeah. Um, but the emotional part of of Carol at the end of the movie, and then the referencing of the fact that they went on to win, you know, you know, not only sixty six, but sixty seven, sixty eight, and sixty nine, and Ferrari never won again. 60, and Ferrari never won again, 60, which I wish they had put on there. That's, that's because if it's a Ferrari versus yep. Ford, that's a five A dislike. That's a five. Actually, I think we're on to C now. Dislike. But... <laughs> no, no, no. It's a dislike to 5A. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a dislike to 5, you know. 5A. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's like, look, 65 is the last year in history that Ferrari won Le Mans. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and they stopped racing there uh, in the, in the you know. They stopped racing that, that in the, the Endurance Series. Yeah, yeah, in the, in the P class. So. Yeah. Anyways, so, yeah, so that's our... Five ish likes <laughs> and our five ish dislikes yeah. of the movie. I call that. Um, but fantastic movie. Just go and watch it. Even if you're not a car person, go and watch it. If you are a car person, there's going to be so much in there for you. Yeah. And stuff. Best, so, uh, best non documentary racing film in history. Absolutely. I would I would say that's. Yeah. See it now. So find, right. a, find a good theater. Yep. Make sure it's got good sound. Absolutely. It's going to be worth it. If you have to wait for the Blu-ray or whatever you got to do, make sure you get, get a good system. Yeah, yeah. And find turn find it that up. find that rich, well-off friend who's got the really nice surround sound system and stuff like that. So yeah, you won't be over disappointed. Absolutely. Right. Boom, 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 boom.